You're watching Reality Check. When Assam's National Register of Citizens, a sensitive exercise to determine who may or may not be an Indian national, was announced, it sparked concerns that millions of those who've made a life here for decades will be turfed out, and also that it was a tool to particularly target minorities. Ministers and officials of this government immediately stepped in to clarify that the NRC is not final. There is a process of review being monitored by the Supreme Court for those who have been excluded, and that this does not target any community. And yet, despite the moderation by his own government, BJP President Amit Shah has turned the NRC into a political weapon, bringing it up in rally after election rally, framing the NRC as conclusive proof that India is overrun with illegal infiltrators from Bangladesh and that these infiltrators are terrorists asking the crowd again and again on whether they should be thrown out. This divisive and frankly irresponsible language hit its highest or lowest pitch this weekend when before an audience in Delhi, he compared infiltrators, presumably from Bangladesh, to termites. जरा जोर से बोलो पीछे तक परेशानी है या नहीं है एक घुसपैठिया को निकालना चाहिए या नहीं निकालना चाहिए देश में करोड़ों की संख्या में घुसपैठिए घुसे हुए हैं दिमाग की तरह चाट गए हैं देश के भविष्य को उनको उखाड़ फेंकना चाहिए या नहीं उखाड़ फेंकना चाहिए Now this termite comment, which was a repeat of something he said in Rajasthan just a day earlier, has drawn a sharp rebuke from the Bangladesh government and we'll have a minister on from Dhaka very shortly. But first, here is a sample of the multiple times Mr. Shah has been using the NRC in political events to target Bangladeshis and also to target his political rivals for raising concerns over the NRC. NRC kya hai? NRC ye desh mein se, Assam mein se, in Assam mein se, Bangladeshi ghus petiyo ko chun chun kar nikal ne ki vyavastha. This last comment made actually on the floor of Parliament. Well, I spoke earlier about this to Hassan ul Haq Inu, the Information Minister of Bangladesh. Mr. Inu, thank you so much for joining us from Dhaka. Now, you actually made some fairly strong remarks about Amit Shah's comments. You said that it is unwanted. Uh, well, uh, 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 it's an unwanted remark made by Amit Shah. And uh, I think that uh, uh, he is not being proper, properly informed about the ground situation uh, uh, of, uh, of the Assam state and Bangladesh position. Uh, so, but uh, we think that uh, it is not a version of the government and the state and, uh, uh, and the Indian government did come up with a very bold, clear statement uh, by their uh, High Commissioner to Bangladesh, Mr. Singla, who came up with a categorical statement that Bangladesh has nothing to do and not to worry 
about the Assam situation because it is totally an internal situation, an internal problem that right. uh, needs to be addressed by the central government of India. Right, but the fact that Mr. Shah is making these comments again and again, is this hurting ties between India and Bangladesh? Well, uh, 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 we don't think so. It's a private comment. Uh, so the Bangladesh government is not uh, uh, worried about his comment. We are just overlooking it. I don't know. Politicians do make some comments. Uh, and uh, in the present situations, the Indian politicians are not making aggressive comments against Bangladesh. Uh, possibly it is directed against their voters. So that is not an issue. Oh, we, we we think to be discussed. Okay, that's very gracious of you. But uh, just to say that uh, the Indian High Commissioner, you were just saying earlier, has clarified that in fact this entire NRC is an Indian internal matter. In other words, that it is unlikely that Bangladeshi migrants will be shipped back to Bangladesh as a result of it. No, they said the uh, uh, the the issue of Bangladeshi citizens staying in Assam uh, is uh, never an issue of discussion uh, for both the countries. And uh, uh, the Indian authorities, uh, uh, Suomoto, uh, they came up with a statement that uh, uh, it is an internal problem and uh, Bangladesh needs, needs not to worry about that. Not, it is not that the foreign ministry asked an explanation. Right. So we did not ask an explanation. It's a Suomoto, direct statement by the Indian authority, you, after the Assam situation uh, developed. Okay, but what if India, as this, as part of this process, does find that there are illegals within India? Will you take them back? Well, uh, uh, let uh, let the uh, Indian government uh, sort out their problem, and if there is a, a, a missing, uh, they need to discuss. We discuss uh, across the table because mm -hmm. we have excellent relations with the Indian government. Uh, uh, as per uh, uh, present situation. Right. So we think, think that uh, uh, it's, it's a subjective question. I don't want to comment on that because uh, we are confident that there was no case of uh, any reporting for the last 47 years uh, in the bordering states of Bangladesh. Hmm. Uh, there is no case of migration and there are no case of communal rights or, or communal confrontation okay. uh, in the districts of Silet, Moli Bazar, Sunam Ganj, which borders Meghalay uh, and uh, uh, Assam and all these things. Uh, so we, uh, our, our position is very clear. Uh, there was no such uh, incident in the border area. So there is no tension. Okay. Final question to you. Is it your position then that there are no illegal Bangladeshis in India? Uh, as such today, Bangladesh position is very clear. There is no illegal Bangladeshi citizens residing in India or working in India. So that is the position. Okay. And uh, even Mr. Amit Shah has not come up with definite proofs. Uh, just he, 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 it is a rhetoric uh, which he commented. We are sorry for that. It is very unfortunate and uh, inappropriate and without uh, proper, backed by proper information. All right. Thank you very much indeed. Mr. Inu, Chandra Bose, leader of the BJP, joining us on the show tonight from Kolkata. Also, Sharmista Mukherjee, spokesperson of the Congress, is with us. Uh, Professor Yogendra Yadav, National President Swaraj India. And Nalini Singh, senior journalist, always a pleasure to have her. Chandra Bose, before we get into the nitty gritties of illegal immigration or supposed illegal immigration from Bangladesh to India, isn't it just overall embarrassing that the president of your party is making comments which we have now members of a government of a neighbor, a neighbor we consider friendly, describing as unfortunate, unwarranted. Our diplomats are having to explain it. You see, the National Register of Citizens yes. is a must. Unfortunately, after the Assam Accord yes. in 1985, which was signed by the Congress regime, at that time, and Chandra in fact, Bose, uh, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi took the Chandra lead. Bose, Chandra Bose, Chandra Bose. I, I, I'm sorry. sorry. I don't, I don't normally interrupt my guests, but I, I'm going to have to interrupt you because this is not at the moment about the NRC. 
This is about the language of Mr. Amit Shah to describe people, Bangladeshis, as termites that have to be extinguished, to repeatedly bring this up in election rally after election rally in far-flung places as Rajasthan. Isn't this condemnable? Right. This is the president of the ruling party. Well, I, uh, let me explain. You see, there is a difference between a refugee and an illegal migrant. One needs to understand. There is a set procedure where a refugee has to apply for a refugee status. You cannot expect people to Are enter you? our country and settle down illegally. So we need to understand that. Bose, it is a question of national Mr. security. Bose, are you, it you is a question of national surely, security. No, no, yes. but surely you're a, someone who is, you know, you, you have a sensible view on most things. You can't surely defend this kind of language. There is no correlation between the NRC and illegal infiltration. The Supreme Court has not even allowed the process of contesting the claims to begin. That process is to begin tomorrow. It's not at all clear how many of those who've been excluded from the NRC are genuinely illegal, even before that. And your government, the home minister, senior ministers are all trying to calm tempers and calm tensions and say, look, everybody relax. This is not the final list. It's not at all clear how many are legal, illegal. Several of them may make it. And already you have Mr. Shah turning this into a political weapon. So I come back to that. Surely that is well, something which is okay. condemnable. And shouldn't you, as a reasonable voice within the BJP, ask for that to be stopped? Well, the expression that uh, Sri Amit Shah ji has used, yes. it is Amit Shah who can explain it. But I would like to state that what Amit Shah actually wanted to say, he wanted to stress on the illegal migrants point of view that should is he the issue the word you cannot not? mix up okay, before i go to the, the others migrants. should he have said should he have used the word termites or not yes or no well I, as i have said that is for amit shah to answer now i'm asking I cannot, you uh, you I'm, know kind I'm, of uh, i'm asking you as a words. spokesperson and as someone maybe, with your own mind well right maybe Termites may not have been the appropriate word. Yes, okay. that's All a right. fact. But illegal okay. finally, migrants, I think, is the appropriate word. Okay. Finally, I've got at least that out of you. Yogendra Yadav, you know, uh, normally we consider these shows as debates. We have to debate something. But I am at a loss for words here when I see the kind of language that we have already got into from senior leaders of the ruling establishment. And we are still in September of 2018. Where are we going with this? Uh, Srinivasan, we are looking at something very deep, something very serious. And it's not merely a question of language. It is not merely a question of illiteracy. 100 crores, he once said, 100 crore people of... Okay, you're going to the other... Sorry, we'll just come back to you in a second. We're getting a bit of a glitch with, uh, with your signal. But essentially... Okay, sorry, uh, Yogendra, I think we have you back. Uh, let's, let's have another go. Go ahead, Yogendra. Can I come? Yeah. Yes, go ahead. I, I, I said it's not merely a question of uh, illiteracy. He mentions 100 crore people from Bangladesh. I assume he knows the population of India. That may have been a slip of tongue. It's not merely a question of civility. The word termite may be replaced by something else. Guspatia, who's causing a threat to India will not disappear. It's a very carefully chosen expression. Uh, diplomatic faux pas. Of course it is a diplomatic faux pas. He knows fully well that Rajnath Singh has said there is no question of sending anyone back to Bangladesh. Uh, that is impossible. He knows it fully well. It is not merely a question of NRC being a good policy or bad policy. That's completely irrelevant. Mm. Incidentally, I happen to support NRC, unlike most of my friends. Right. The real issue is, as you pointed out, that this Bangladeshi Guspetia is being raised in Rajasthan, where it's remotely not an issue. Yes. In Delhi, where it could be a minor, minor issue. The real thing is we are looking at a glimpse of 2019 parliamentary election. Mm. And we know now 
the level at which 2019 parliamentary election will be played. Okay. As I keep saying, BJP would want this to become Modi versus Rahul, Hindu versus Muslim. Right. That's what we are witnessing. Okay. And in that process, very dangerous games on delicate questions will be played. This is worrying. Okay. Nalini Singh, is this going to have any kind of political dividend to use this kind of language? Um, I think Mr. Amit Shah mistakenly thinks so. In the clips that you showed, mm. you showed uh, Jaipur, uh, uh, another place in Rajasthan, uh, you've shown Kolkata, uh, etc., and Rajya Sabha, and uh, a day before yesterday in, in uh, Jaipur again, in Rajasthan again, and then De Delhi. Now, do you see that there was not one from Assam? Mm. Now, this is grandstanding. This is what's really going on. They will not say it, he will not say it in Assam. But he will say everywhere where there are pole bound. I mean, Rajasthan is pole bound. Delhi yes. is a megaphone. Yes. So, grandstanding is one. The other one is. But you're saying I'm it's mistaken belief that the idea that this is actually going to yield political because, dividend. Because one of these days, the way uh, the, the the decibels at which even you know other uh, comments by the opposition party are on other issues. Yeah. What's happening is, as you pointed out, that it's only it's ironically tomorrow yes. that the Supreme Court has said complaints and objections can be filed yes. tonight. These are neither infiltrators nor are they termites. Absolutely. So, they so, can, yeah. so what's happening is yeah. that in a situation like this, right. you know, uh, Mr. Amit Shah is the president of the world's largest political party, but does, he's not qualified to uh, to talk about Delhi Dhaka ties right and, and I think to, that's that's to do this yeah you're saying that's honest. that's the risk here that's the risk here Sharmista Mukherjee is the Congress able to really take this on because I think the Congress also increasingly seems to be following a politics where it's uncertain that if you start to now attack Amit Shah on this issue then he'll turn around and say you're supporting infiltrators which in fact he's already doing Well, it's not a question of, you know, uh, attacking Amit Shah because he made such a ridiculous statement. For example, as uh, Dr. Yogendra Jadav has pointed out that, you know, he's saying that 100 crores of infiltrators are there considering the population of India is 121 crores. So, I mean, it means uh, just, you know, 21 crores are original Indian uh, citizens. So, you know, it's so ridiculous, you mm. know, it's such a ridiculous statement yes. that it doesn't really... Uh, uh, worth a comment uh, but you know it what is worrying that the kind of language he has used yes that that has actually compelled a minister from the Bangladesh government to comment upon yes and considering who's actually quite that, gracious you know, we have had very good relationship with Bangladesh since its inception yes. and, and and we we are actually you know to be very honest you know we are losing friends in our neighborhood right the Modi government foreign policy hasn't been one of its uh, greatest achievements so in this scenario, to make right. such Can statements I, yeah. where, uh, about uh, you know citizens uh, of a, a friendly country, this is absolutely atrocious. Okay, let me just go back to condemnable, and right. this is obviously that you know Mr. Amit Shah is trying to play a divide and uh, rule politics okay. as in usual fact, with the BJP. In fact, today let's just put that tweet up on the screen. In fact, today Sushma Swaraj had a meeting in Bangladesh with her counterpart which uh, was, I think it happened in New York, the foreign ministry tweeted it. So there is a picture, there you actually have Sushma Swaraj, who is uh, greeting Sheikh Hasina, I beg your pardon, not her counterpart, she's actually greeting Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina at the UN. And this is the same time when headlines in India talk about Bangladeshis being termites. I want to put up another tweet, Chandra Bose, and then get you to react to it. This is from Amy Kasmin who is the India correspondent or the South Asia Bureau Chief for the Financial Times. She says, every time I read about BJP for India President Amit Shah calling Bangladeshi migrants in India termites, I recall how Hutus called Tutsis cockroaches before the Rwandan genocide. Chandra Bose. I think we need to take a holistic approach. It is not only about immigrants or migrants from Bangladesh. If you observe that Rohingyas from mm. Myanmar, they yes. have reached Jammu. They have reached Jammu. They have also reached West Bengal. 
So it is an issue 20 which years I ago. think India has to tackle in a holistic manner. Let us not segregate. It is You are seeing Bangladesh is in isolation. It is not an no, issue no, of isolation. On. You no, have no, to Mr. be holistic. Bose. You have to address the illegal migrants uh, in Bose, a holistic manner. This is what I am trying to the, say. Why are we making is, it Bangladesh versus India? That's not the right approach. We aren't. We aren't. Your party president is. And he's not talking about illegal migration in a holistic way. You heard him there again and again. He's literally screaming into the microphone saying these illegal migrants are ghuspets, they're infiltrators, they're behind acts of terrorism, and they need to be thrown out. He's comparing them to termites. This is him saying it, not us. And I can tell you that we actually pulled out the data. Let's actually put that up on screen. The Home Ministry, in a reply to the Lok Sabha in April 2017, said there is no accurate data on the involvement of illegal migrants in anti-national activities. Such illegal migrants may be prone to Islamic fundamentalism and become easy prey for militancy and communal conflicts, but there is no accurate data on their involvement. Again in December, to the Rajya Sabha, the Home Ministry says it's not possible to have a correct estimate of such illegal migrants, including Bangladeshi nationals residing in the country. Some instances of violation of the law have been reported. From here, Mr. Amit Shah extrapolates that there are 100 crore illegals and they're causing terrorist attacks, while his own government is not saying that. Isn't this, as I come back to this, this is the problem, not the question of the NRC, which is legitimate, not the question of illegal migration, which is a legitimate debate, or about terrorism, which is, it's, it is this. It is this complete high-pitched rhetoric based on nothing. There's no facts. Chandra Bose. Over the last couple of years, yes, over the last couple of years, the NIA has made investigation in West Bengal into bomb factories which have grown in West Bengal, which have direct links with terrorists across the border sure. in Bangladesh. Okay. So you mean to say the NIA report is false? It's no, not. It's I'm a not genuine saying that. report. Now, I'm not now, saying that. I'm talking about sweeping sorry? generalizations. I'm talking about sweeping generalizations. That's the problem, isn't it? Nalini Singh. It's not about terrorism. Of course there's a problem with terrorism. Of course some of those terrorist you groups know, are based in Bangladesh. But you see, all of them are infiltrators. You know, Vasu, actually the NRC is such serious business that I'm astounded that, and it's totally unacceptable that anybody, Mr. Amit Shah, should be speaking like this. Uh, this particular, the question of citizenship, religion, yes. Yes. and illegal immigration has caused hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people to right. be slaughtered in Assam and it's uh, put Assam back by 15 years. Right. And to now see this, to you know, it, it. politicize in, in a halka pulka manner to say dimak, to say termites, is it's actually okay, is a sense of foreboding I get. And, uh, and uh, Yogendra Yadav, where, what, where do you see this going? I mean, now after the fact that the, 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 you know, the Bangladeshi government had had to step in, do you think that this may see some reduction in Mr. Shah's rhetoric? I'm afraid uh, I can't give a very nice answer to this because to my mind it is part of a very carefully thought out political strategy as Nalini Singh reminds us. Right. He's not talking about it in Assam because in Assam if you talk about illegal Bangladeshi migrants, everyone knows that 15 lakh out of those 40 lakhs are Hindu yes. illegal migrants. Yes. He wants to talk about that in Rajasthan, in Delhi and then all over the country because it helps him create that myth of that Muslim terrorist. It is about, it is not about migrants, it is not about Bangladesh, right. it is about creating a mythical Muslim terrorist figure. Right. And well, I'm afraid this government is playing with fire, with very delicate question. Assam is being used as nothing more than an right. uh, example, just as a metaphor to be used in elections. Okay, well it is very worrying but we're out of time. Thank you all so much for joining me on Reality Check. That's all we have. Good night.